Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this nine game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, guys, if you could leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to be giving you this free content, free advice, free um, insight as to how you can win some money on these NBA DFS slates. All that I ask in return is that you hit that subscribe button and if you are interested in some further content from me, I do offer an NBA DFS package. Link below in the description over there on Patreon. You get access to my premium projections, my data sheets. You're going to get access to things like color-coded data sheets that give you some insight as to which teams are good defensively in transition, which teams are bad defensively in transition, which teams give up the most offensive putbacks, um, which teams are giving up the most shots around the rim, which teams are giving up the most shots from the three-point arc, all of that fun stuff. On top of my projections um, and my core plays. So check that out. Link below in the description. And with all of that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today. First game on the slate is Toronto taking on Washington. Um, Bradley Beal is the top price guy in this one at 9-3. This game comes in with a 229.5 over under with a 5.5 point spread in favor of the Toronto Raptors. And Westbrook is expected to be back. So it's going to be back to the same old... Uh, Washington squad on the Toronto side. OG Anunoby's been out for quite some time now. He's cool said as questionable in this one. So there's a good chance we could see him return in this one, if not soon. Um, he's been just listed as out pretty much the whole time. So um, if he's back, that could cut into Norman Powell minutes. He would become less viable to play. If he continues to be out, Norman Powell's a great play, especially in this Washington matchup. This Washington defense is not good, so we're going to have a lot of interest in the Toronto side in this one. Um, on the Washington side, with Westbrook back, it's really simple. We're just looking to play Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook. I would prefer Westbrook at the discount at only 8-4. Um, Beal's a guy that I'm just going to continue to play when Westbrook is out. Um, I mean, this game is expected to stay somewhat close for the Washington side. It's a 5.5 point spread, which is a lot better than what they typically do. You know, Washington has been involved in a lot of blowouts this year. But on the Toronto side, it's really simple because we know where all the minutes are going. This this rotation is so solidified. It's Norman Powell, Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, and Fred Van Fleet. It's all the pay-up options. Like, unfortunately, you can't pay play all these guys in the same lineup. But, but it doesn't really matter because you know you're confident. If you're making multiple lineups and or making one lineup and you have a slot left with this amount of salary left, like I feel fully confident playing any one of these guys. Um Van Vliet putting up 53 and 54 DraftKings points the last two times out. If we go to Siakam's game logs recently, he's been playing very, very well. Um, 65, 37, and 53 DraftKings points. Uh, Norman Powell at 6'8 has got the big bump with no OG on Anubi. He's played 36, 32, 37 minutes and put up 32 and 35 DraftKings points last. He's been the most disappointing, um, but the cheapest for a reason. And then you got Kyle Lowry, who the last two times out has really disappointed, but... Um, had to leave the game with a back injury and is not listed on the injury report for this one. So maybe something to be skeptical there as far as, you know, him returning after having to leave the game last time out. But um, other than that, guys, feel fully confident. And then lastly, Chris Boucher at 5'9 uh, is a risk reward play. That's minutes have been kind of all over the place, but recently has seen upwards more towards 30 minutes a game with no OG on a newbie continuing to be out. Um, if, uh, Anunoby's out. I'm going to like Boucher. If Anunoby's back, he may probably going to take a pretty big hit there. So, yeah. Um, can feel really good playing those Toronto side, the Toronto side in that game against the Washington squad that does not play any defense. So, like those guys. Um, Luka Doncic at the top, taking on Atlanta in this second game on the slate. He comes in with a 10 8 price tag. This game comes in with a 233.5 over under with a 4.5 point spread in favor of the Dallas Mavericks. So, expect it to be a fast paced game. Um, and expected to stay close, which is going to make me like Luka Doncic a lot at 10-8. The only thing we don't like about Luka is Kristaps Porzingis is back, and he has been digging into his usage. But in a close game, uh, there's plenty of buckets to go around for both of these guys. So Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis are going to be the only ones I'm interested on the Dallas side. The usage is that, you know, solidified. Um, there's, there's some guys you can play that are darts, but these two are the mainly ones you're looking to throw in your lineups. You're not looking to get any cute with any value plays. There's going to be other spots on the slate that we can throw in some cheaper guys. Um, on the Dallas side, you know, you're playing Kristaps, you're playing Luka. So, like both of those guys on the Atlanta side, same rule kind of applies. DeAndre Hunter is out still. So, you know, guys like Kevin Horter, Cam Reddish, and Danilo Gallinari, you're going to continue to see um, a bump in usage. Rajon Rondo is out as well. 
So maybe we could begin sneaky playing a uh, cheaper guard on the Atlanta side and a Goodwin at 3-1. Uh, so Brandon Goodwin could, be, could become an interesting value option on this slate today because of how cheap he is with no Rajon Rondo. Danilo Gallinari continues to see his minutes somewhat limited for my liking. He did get up to 25 last time, so this might be the time to jump on him, but he's only been playing around like 20 minutes a game as they're slowly working him back from injury. He's been on a 25-minute restriction, so um, you know I'm definitely going to have more interest in Cam Reddish and Kevin Herter because they don't have minutes limits. Um so, yeah, that's why I'd be looking to go on the Atlanta side if I'm not playing a Trey Young or a Clint Capella. For sure, Kevin Horner makes the most sense at 5'6 with his production. John Collins, I'm going to continue to fade because of the Clint Capella cutting into his rebounding upside. Clint, Clint Capella would be my preferred option at 8'6. Um, and, of course, Trey Young. Um, you know, at 9'9, nine, nine, he's always going to be a viable play. He has the upside. It's just a matter of if he can get you there, and it's a matter of if we really want to prioritize him for instance, over a guy like a uh, a Russell Westbrook that we already discussed about at a cheaper price tag. So, um, so it would be interesting to see how my final projections grade out. But, of course, in a high up-tempo game with Trey Young on the floor, you're going to have interest. 233.5 over under. So, um, Indiana taking on Brooklyn. Back-to-back -back for Brooklyn. Last night we saw them take the L against the Detroit team. That continues to beat good teams. Detroit beating the Lakers, beating the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Um, can't quite wrap my head around it, but it's happening. So 234 and a half over under with a two point spread in favor of the Brooklyn Nets expected to be another very fast paced game. We just talked about that Dallas Atlanta game. This one's also going to be a fast game as is every single Brooklyn game. Um, just continue to target Brooklyn guys. They don't, they're not playing any defense ever since acquiring the big three, which they don't even have the third option at Kevin Durant, who's their best defender out of the big three. Um, their defense is dreadful. It's even worse without him. So. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis and Malcolm Brogdon are going to be very big priorities for me on this slate. Both these guys' usage has soared through the roof since getting rid of Victor Oladipo on the Indiana side. And they are both tremendous plays tonight. Malcolm Brogdon has been really struggling recently. His upside has been capped. He hasn't really been doing anything. And his price tag has dropped all the way down to 7-4. And he gets a dream matchup. So, you know, if there was ever a matchup to be playing Malcolm Brogdon and feel really good about it, this is the one. So it's like you just got to keep playing him. It, and he's going to come through for you eventually. Um, I would keep playing him, guys. I would not be fading him based on his recent struggles. This is one of the best matches we can get. So I'd be playing him. And <clears throat> on the Brooklyn side, it's James Harden, Kyrie Irving. They're going to get all the usage with no Kevin Durant. It's very simple. You got 39 minutes out of... Um, James Harden last night, he wasn't exactly able to have the biggest game, but 62 DraftKings points, when you're saying that's not the biggest game, that is a good telltale sign that this guy has a tremendous amount of upside. So continue to play James Harden, continue to play Kyrie Irving, and feel really good about it because there is no Kevin Durant. You just got to continue to play these guys, feel good about it, continue to play Malcolm Brogdon, Demonstrous Bonus in this game. Uh, Joe Harris, Miles Turner... At 6K a piece, both make sense as well. Both have a lot of upside at that price tag. It's just they're going to be probably hit or miss for you. Take what you can get, but, you know, that's what you're getting yourself into playing those guys. Jeremy Lamb at 5-4 is a very intriguing option as well for me. I will have a lot of interest in him in this matchup. He has a ton of upside. 33, 37, 5, and 14 the last four times out. Just goes to show you what you're dealing with. A little uh, versatile all over the place with his scoring, but... Still got to like the guy at 5'4". I'm going to have a lot of interest in him. And you can play a Bruce Brown, a TLC down here for value plays with no Kevin Durant. Um, these guys are going to see more minutes on the wings. So moving further along, Charlotte taking on Memphis. This game right now comes in with a 226 over under with a four point spread in favor of the Memphis Grizzlies. So, expect it to be a close game. Expect it to be somewhat fast-paced. And LaMelo Ball is priced all the way up to 8-5 now. Jaron Jackson, Devontae Graham looks like they're going to continue to be out. Brandon Clark looks like he's going to continue to be out. De'Anthony Mountain looks like he's going to continue to be out. But both of these sides are getting to the point of where they're pretty healthy. So, um, you know... Take with that what you will. LaMelo Ball priced all the way up to 
seeing 30, 32 minutes the last two times out, putting up 38 and 50 DraftKings points. He does have the upside to get you there, but DraftKings acting very quickly to price him up. So do with, with that what you will. If I'm willing to play him, probably going to depend on some of the other value we have on the slate. I just have a feeling he's not going to be fitting into my lineups at that price tag, but that's just speculation currently. Gordon Hayward at 7-7 is going to continue to make a lot of sense, getting a lot of minutes, a lot of usage on this team. As always, it's just he's priced up. I was playing Gordon Hayward a lot when he was down in the low 7K range. Now he's up in the upper 7K range, which, believe it or not, it does make a big difference. Jonas Valanciunas at 7-4 on the Memphis side, putting up 60 DraftKings points last time out and continuing to see his minutes rise. He got all the way up to 34 minutes last time, and he's only at 7-4, taking on the Charlotte front court. I'm going to love Jonas Valanciunas. John ja Morant on the Memphis side. Those are the two guys that are going to get all the usage in this offense. So those are the two I'll be looking to. Once you get down past them, it's getting a little cute. Terry Rozier at 6-2. I will continue to have interest in because of no Devontae Graham. I think he's going to continue to see minutes and usage, and he's way cheaper than LaMelo Ball. So I do like Terry Rozier at his price tag. I'd rather take the discount on him than playing LaMelo Ball. And then down here in Memphis is where things get a little cluttered. You know, you have all these guys in the rotation. Same thing on the Charlotte side. You can, my favorite options would be P.J. Washington and Malik Monk. Uh, but, you know, what, do I really have a ton of interest in them? Probably not. Malik Monk continues to have some upside with no Devontae Graham, and he can definitely get you there. But a little bit of a risky proposition. And then, yeah, Gorgie Jang continues to be an option at 4-2 with no... Um, with no Jaron Jackson Jr. and no Brandon Clark, but I don't know. The Memphis rotation is a little uncomfortable for me, so I think the guys we've gone over so far are really the only ones I'm looking to stick to. Lastly, Cody Zeller at 5'9". continues to see starting minutes as a center, so he makes a lot of sense as a play as well um, in this one. And they're going to need his services, the guard Jonas Valanciunas, so he could see you know some more minutes. Uh, let's see. Okay. The Clippers taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns is questionable and could come back in this one. This game comes in with a 227 over under with an 8.5 point spread in favor of the Los Angeles Clippers. So not exactly the fastest paced game and expected to be somewhat of a blowout. However, there is no Paul George, which is going to give a big usage bump to Kawhi Leonard at 9-4. And Kawhi Leonard gets a tremendous matchup taken on Minnesota. It's just a matter of whether they're really going to need him out there the whole time and whether he's really going to be motivated to play this game because I do like to think that Kawhi Leonard's more of a big game player. Um, I'd like to target him in the games where they really need him. It kind of feels like they can just disperse the minutes in this one and run away with the game pretty easily. So as far as who I'm looking to, I'd be looking on the cheaper end to a guy like a Luke Kennard that can shoot the three ball and they get some more minutes at the spread if the, you know, the game gets away from the Minnesota side a little bit. Um, so you know that's probably the approach I would be playing in this one. On the Minnesota side, uh, Carl Anthony Towns is doubtful, so don't expect him to be back. And D'Angelo Russell is listed as a true questionable, so kind of just feels like they're going to sit D'Angelo Russell out until Carl Anthony Towns comes back. I don't know what's going on there, guys. It just seems a little fishy, but Malik Beasley is going to continue to see a bunch of shots at 7K, shooting 21, 19, 19, and 18 times the last four times out, putting up 42, 38, 34, and 57 DraftKings points. So continue to have interest in him if he could fit into your lineups at that price tag. Uh, and then it's really Nas Reed, Anthony Edwards, Ricky Rubio continues to see his minutes somewhat limited, even Nas Reed and Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is my preferred option because they have a lot invested in this guy. First round pick. They're going to play him no matter what. So it's Anthony Edwards, Malik Beasley. After that, this rotation is just getting a little too cluttered for my liking. New Orleans taking on Chicago. Zach Levine comes with a 9K price tag at the top in this game. This game comes with a 230 over under with a three point spread in favor of the New Orleans Pelicans. And going to be a fast paced game in both sides. Not exactly the strongest defensively. So Going to be liking the heavy-duty um, usage guys in this one. Zach Levine, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson. And then on the cheap end, you could be playing Kobe White, Eric Bledsoe. They're getting solidified minutes in the rotation. Patrick Williams, Denzel Valentine are going to continue to see minutes as well as Thomas Sadoransky with no Wendell Carter Jr. and Laurie Marketing. Um, and then Garrett Temple at 4-1 as well. My favorite options out of all these guys would definitely continue to be Denzel Valentine just because of how much this guy is willing to chuck it. This guy will shoot so much and he just does not care. 13, 17, 12, and 10 shot attempts the last four times out. 
priced up to 5-3, but New Orleans is a great matchup to take on in this one. So going to continue to like Denzel Valentine. And Patrick Williams, you could continue to play as well just because of how many minutes he's playing, but his fitness point per minute production is not as good. Uh, but he's going to continue to play like mid-30 minutes, so um, you know, take what you can get as far as on the minutes front. And then, yeah, I mean, on the other side, it's really simple. It's Lonzo Ball, it's Zion Williamson, it's Brandon Ingram. You can play an Eric Bledsoe, uh, but that's getting a lot less... Um, you know, it's getting a little more cute. He's getting minutes cut into the rotation by guys like Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Josh Hart, all these guys down here at, like, the 4K range. Josh Hart having a huge game last night, grabbing 17 rebounds. So I think that's a little bit of an outlier. Um, but point being, he can come off the bench, have a big game for you, and cut into Eric Bledsoe's usage. So I'm not looking to go there. It's Lonzo Ball, it's Zion Williamson, it's Brandon Ingram. No need to get cute. You can get to the Chief guys on the uh, Chicago side, as mentioned, due to Patrick Williams and Denzel Valentine. But on the New Orleans side, really just playing the uh, upper tier guys. And then on the Chicago side, you can definitely be playing a Zach Levine at 9K. Going to love him in this one. Has been a while since we've really seen that big upside game from Zach Levine. Uh, you know, last time he touched mid-50s was on the 6th, which was just one game prior to last game. So... But we're waiting for that 60-plus game from him, and I do think that this is a viable game that where that could happen with a fast up-tempo pace and the fact that New Orleans' defense just has not been strong. Zion Williamson only playing 21 minutes in the blowout last night and Brandon Ingram playing 28. So expect these guys to get more run tonight, um, and I definitely do like them in this game. I would prefer Zion Williamson at 8-1. I will say that. The, the rebounding upside is there for him, so I like him more. Cleveland taking on Denver. Nikola Jokic comes in at 11K. This game comes with a 223.5 over under with a 9.5 point spread. I would expect this game to be a blowout. I'm not going to have interest in the upper tier guys in Nikola Jokic. Um, sorry, just not willing to go there in a game where I don't think they're going to really need him. They could pull him early easily and feel comfortable and pull away with the game. So I'm not looking to go there personally. Andre Drummond, Colin Sexton on the other side are the ones they're really going to need to stay in the game. So, sure, they do make sense. The only thing I'm worried about with Andre Drummond is that Jared Allen continues to cut into his usage, his rebounding upside as well. Um, but with that being said, we're seeing him priced down all the way to A3 when he was priced up in the mid-9K range before Jared Allen coming over. So you're getting a little bit of a discount on him. you just got, got to deal with that little bit of a risk. Colin Sexton at 7K continues to see a bunch of usage on this squad and a lot of minutes, you know, upper 30 minutes a game. Hasn't really seen a big upside game, but they're going to need him to stay in this one. So those are the guys I'm looking to play if I am. Overall, I'm not going to have a ton of interest in this game, guys. Expected to be a blow, expected to be, you know, if I'm playing someone, I'm playing the guys in the low range, like a RJ Hampton and hoping this game blows out and he gets some more minutes on the Denver side. Uh, but... If it doesn't blow out, that's a risk. That's a more of a tournament option. And that's really what I'm looking to. You could play a JaVale McGee on the Cleveland side. Take it on his former team in Denver. He hasn't really been in the rotation recently. And if this game is going to blow out at 3K, he could absolutely crush that price tag. So he's an intriguing play in the blowout. Uh, and then, yeah, on the Denver side, you're looking to play the guys that would get more minutes, like a Monte Morris. Um at 4-7, so he's an intriguing play for the blowout, and that's pretty much the approach I'd be taking in this one. Um, yeah, you could play the cheaper guys on the the Cleveland side as far as the upper tier guys. The cheaper of the upper tier guys, I guess Darius Garland at 6K as well. If you felt like they're going to stick around just long enough for him to get there, that would make some sense as well to me. Uh, but, yeah, overall, just... We're not the fastest paced game. Jamal Murray would probably be my favorite uh, quote unquote elite option on the Denver side at 7K, priced up the highest besides Nick Leo, which can get hot and have a big game for you. So, but overall, I'm not going to try to talk you onto too many options there when we have so many great options that we've already talked about in faster paced games. Oklahoma City take it on the Los Angeles Lakers. This game comes in at a 12 point spread and a 219 over under. So, once again, we can make quick work of this one. Um, not going to have any interest. Uh, Shea Gildas Alexander looks like he's going to be out again. So we could have some usage bumps to guys down here that we could be playing, like a Dort, like a, an Isaiah Roby, like a Kenrich Williams. Um, Maladon, Ariza continue to be out. 
So, um, Diallo's going to continue to be a, a good play. I just can't seem to find him in the player pool. 6-5. So, he's priced all the way up to 6-5, but for good reason. Uh, I mean, look at his fantasy point per minute production. 31, 36, 30, and 42 DraftKings points. And with no Shea Gilders, Alexander, he's going to continue to chuck it. So, continue to play Diallo. He makes a lot of sense. LeBron James is questionable. Anthony Davis is questionable. LeBron James is listed as probable, though, and Anthony Davis is listed as a true questionable. So, uh, if he's out, we could be playing a Montres Harrell or Kyle Kuzma. But on the Oklahoma City side, it's Diallo, it's Al Horford, it's Dort, it's Kenrich Williams, Justin Jackson at 3-9 is a decent play, Isaiah Roby at 3-7. We liked him a lot more when there was no Al Horford, but um, all these guys are going to be forced to play minutes. There is no Mike Muscala. So that's the thing. Even though there's Al Horford's back and Muscala's out, so Justin Jackson and Isaiah Roby still going to get more run. I think Isaiah Roby at 3-7 is a very intriguing play because he can get it going pretty quickly. Um, last time out seeing 34 minutes, play, putting up 34 draft points. So, yeah, I mean, the Oklahoma City side is going to provide some value. Unfortunately, it's not the fastest-paced game, but with them being so hurt, you could definitely be looking to all those guys. Uh, my favorites being Diallo, Horford, Baisley, I mean, they're priced up in that order for a reason. You know, they're going to be my favorites. And then once we get down to the cheaper range, Isaiah Roby at 3.7, I do think it's a very intriguing option all the way down in the 3K range. Milwaukee taking on Phoenix, looking like Chris Paul is questionable. Drew Holiday is out. As far as the Vegas lines are concerned, this game comes in with a 2.25 over under with a 4.5 point spread in favor of the Milwaukee Bucks. So not the fastest paced game, but is expected to stay close, which is somewhat of a win anytime the Milwaukee side is expected to be in a close game. Giannis Antetokounmpo at 10-6 is an intriguing option. The Phoenix defense has been pretty good, but in a close game, you expect him to play mid-30 minutes, and he has a very good fantasy point for mid-producer, so you could still be playing him. Devin Booker, if Chris Paul's out, we're going to really like Devin Booker. He's going to get a big usage bump. So Etwan Moore would probably draw the start as well, but Devin Booker at 8-1 would become more of the point guard in this offense. We saw him put up 54 drafting points last time, and we would really like him. If Chris Paul's back, I'm not going to like him too much. Chris Middleton gets a big bump with no Drew Holiday out there at 7-9. I will continue to play a bunch of him. Uh, only 7-9. He was priced up in the mid-AK range with Drew Holiday in the game, so continue to jump on his price tag. Uh, and then Jay Crowder is as questionable, so if he continues to be out, you know we're looking at some Frank Kaminsky minutes, uh, Cameron Johnson minutes. These guys continue to be decent plays. Uh, if there's no Chris Paul, Javon Carter at 3-4 could see some more minutes, playing 19 minutes last time. But whether you want to go there or not, it's a little bit more of a testy situation because, as mentioned, Etuan Moore is probably going to draw the start at 4-3. So he'd be the one I'm really looking to at 4-3, though. But he, now he was at 3-5 last time. So tough saying if he's going to still be able to get there. Not exactly the best fantasy point from a producer. He can shoot the three ball from time to time. But, um. Yeah, with that big price bump, it's going to be harder to go there than it was last time when he was still in the 3K range. Um, and yeah, it's really kind of straightforward, guys. I mean, um, Mikel Bridges is going to continue to see more minutes and more usage if there is no Jay Crowder on top of no Chris Paul. So don't forget about him. That would be the last thing I bring out or bring up. And then, of course, DeAndre Ian is always the. Uh, the big man that's getting the guaranteed usage at 7-1. So you could have a some interest in him. The only problem with him is I'm concerned about Brooke Lopez and bringing... Brooke Lopez likes to bring the big man out to the three-point arc because that's where he lives. And so that's going to take away from the rebounding upside of DeAndre. And so I probably won't be playing him for that reason. But could he get you there? Sure. You know, at 7-1, the price tag is very appropriate. It's just this game situation where I think that uh, Brooke Lopez is going to be bringing me out to the three-point arc. And with all that being said, guys, I got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be DeMontis Sabonis at this 8-6 price tag. Taking on this Brooklyn squad, we were playing in the mid-9K range up all the way to 10-1 for this guy at some point in the season. He's getting the most features he has gotten all season long right now. And he's only priced at 8-6. So I absolutely love DeMontis Sabonis in this matchup taking on this Brooklyn squad. I have a feeling he's going to have a big game tonight. Putting up 1.29 DK points per minute. 
Right now, I've got him projected for mid-30 minutes in a 234.5 over-under game against this Brooklyn squad that has really struggled defensively. I absolutely love DeMontis Sabonis tonight, and there is no doubt that he is my lock of the night. So there you have it, guys. DeMontis Sabonis. Get him in your lineups. That is all from me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel down below. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. And check out my Patreon package. Link below in the description, guys. It's going to be well worth your money that you're investing into. A good bang for your buck. I promise you that with all the tools and all the efforts that I'm putting into it at an affordable price. Check that stuff out. That is all from me in this one. Wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.